Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back to do another Moonlight's Blessing video, this one for the Fallen Land characters from Moonlight Theater. We'll be discussing all seven of the characters and ranking them from which one I think is the best all the way down to which one I think is the worst. I'll talk about things like best use cases, some possible alternatives if you're looking for a character that is multifaceted, and at the end of the day, give you a conclusion on why I think you should take this character over another or what is the best case scenario why you would want to pick one over another. All that stuff you've pretty much come to expect from me from not only my old Moonlight's Blessing video, but every other selector video that I've done, including all of those custom summons that we've talked about in the past. Hopefully, this video will be of some use to you. I recognize if you're watching it, it's probably because you have one or two characters in mind. At the end of the day, the stuff in this video is my opinion and mine alone. You don't necessarily have to listen to me. If there's a specific character that you have in mind, such as Remnant Violet or like Sylvan Sage Vivian because you like how they look, choose that character. At the end of the day, Epic Seven is a game. I would rather you have more fun with a character that you really want than necessarily taking a character that is what a tier list or what I personally think is the best possible option. This is just an objective list of me just looking at where characters are good and saying, hey, you'll get the most uses out of this one. This one is pretty meta defining in PvP and is kind of like a staple, so you should probably take it. Things like that. Again, if you don't care about that, ultimately take the character you're going to enjoy and have the most fun with. With that out of the way, let's just jump into it and talk about the very first character on the list, which is going to be, of course, Conqueror Alolius. Let's start this video off by talking about Conqueror Alolius, who is my number one pick from the Fallen Land Selector for most people watching this video. Conqueror Alolius, as of the recording of this video, has been out for about 21 months at this point. And during that time, she's probably been the best overall character in Epic 7. She's insanely good thanks to her amazing base stats here from the Aquarius Zodiac sign. She is the fastest warrior in the game with 121 base speed and has fairly good defense and health scores making her reasonably tanky considering how fast she can actually be. On top of that her kit is just overloaded. For Honor is probably the best initiation skill in the game. It removes buffs. It gives an attack down for the team. It makes your team tankier thanks to the Vigor debuff and then it also gives you an extra turn, allowing you to go into either her skill to cover, which is a really strong provoke skill that gives a barrier to herself as well as one of her teammates, or into her skill one kneel down, which is probably the best basic attack skill in the entire game. This character is just so good in so many game modes. The only game modes I think she's not good in are Adventure and Expedition. She is a cornerstone of almost every PvP format, so if you're serious about PvP, I think this character is a must pick up amazing in arena guild war offense and defense in world arena she's got one of the highest win rates and one of the highest ban rates pretty much throughout the game's history uh, she's insanely good in hall of trials fairly good in abyss and abyss challenge mode uh, good in raid good in advent good in ancient inheritance not really too much else to say about her positives i can't sink them enough if i have to talk about cons for the character there are two. Number one, she has a lot more counters nowadays than she did when she first came out. But even still, I think she's the best character in the game. And the only other real major drawback is that if you're a brand new player, to get the most out of this character, you do need a lot of speed on your equipment to really bring out her full potential. I talk about ways to alleviate this in my Conqueror Lilius guide, which I will link down in this video's description. And for any other Moonlight 5 stars that I've talked about that are in this video, if they have guides, I'll also link those down in this video's description. If you don't have really good gear and you don't think that you'll be able to get high-end speed gear to really make this character pop, then you can, I guess, take the second choice, which is Mediator Coeric, and he's pretty much the only other character I would consider taking before Conqueror Elias on this list, regardless of playstyle or how long you've been playing the game. My second choice would be Mediator Coeric, who I think is the only other meta-defining unit of the characters on this list. If you don't have Mediator Coeric or Conqueror Elias, these should be the two that you take, regardless of your playstyle. They are by far the most powerful characters on this list. And if you're serious about PvP, you definitely want to take one of these two characters. 
Mediator Quark is what I would consider an evergreen character. I don't really think this character is ever going to fade off in PvP unless something absolutely insane happens or there's just a ton of skill resets just introduced into the format, which if that's the case, then we've got more serious issues because that's like unleashing multiple Luas onto the format. But yeah, Nature Restoration here is the best cleanse skill in the entire game. It is a full debuff cleanse for your entire team, as well as it gives the immunity buff to your team, preventing further debuffs. Now, the thing is, other cleansers do exist in Epic 7, but the thing is, they need to build effect resistance. This character gets to just shrug off potential stuns, silences, sleeps, as long as this thing is available. So you basically can't stop this guy from using a cleanse to save his team and get rid of all the debuffs, making him a nightmare for any debuff heavy teams to actually play against. And since he doesn't need to build effect resistance, he can just put it all into defense and health because he doesn't really need anything else uh, to actually function. And by the way, he has 7,323 health, which is pretty much the highest in the entire game. And he's got above average defense at 657. So the character has basically got better tank stats than most tanks. He doesn't need to waste any stats on effect resistance. Again, you can't stop this character from saving his team from debuffs. And even if you don't play against debuffers, Nature Restoration also gives attack up to your entire team, which is the most valuable buff in all PvP. So he's good even if you don't actually need a cleanser. Now, the reason I called him Mr. Swiss Army Knife to begin with is his other two skills are also insane. Balance of Power removes all buffs from a target, gives them attack down, basically nullifying their offensive capability, and it also gives a shield to your entire team. So, yeah, it, it's kind of an insane skill. It does everything. And then his skill one, Retribution, is also an incredibly overtuned skill one. It's probably the second best skill one in the entire game for PvP behind Lilius's Kneel Down. It gives combat readies to himself as well as another person on his team. So he speeds up your team. He reduces the damage on the enemy team. He protects your team. He gets rid of buffs on the enemy team. He gives your team a load of buffs. And he makes it so that your team can't actually be controlled. He does literally everything it feels like in PvP. Actually insane character. That said... I still think Conqueror Lilius is a little bit stronger, and she's also more useful in more game modes. I think that is Meteor Quarric's biggest drawback. He's only really good in PvP. He's pretty average, I feel like, in a lot of PvE content. Sure, you can use him, but I don't think he's ever really the best choice. That said, there's no denying that this character is a meta-defining top-tier PvP character. Debuffs, as of the recording of this video, are insanely strong. And I think if you don't have Mediator, you will struggle in the current meta unless you are completely married to only playing very aggressive or cleave strategies. And even if you are, I think he is still worth picking up in case you need to pivot out of that strategy and move towards a more standard strategy. Again, for those watching this video, Conquer Elias and Mediator stand head and shoulders above every other character that I'm going to talk about after this on this list. You should be taking one of these two characters, I feel like, with your selector. If you have both, then feel free to take a look at the other five options that we'll be talking about in this video. Next up, let's talk about the hottest character in the game, at least in my opinion, in Sylvan Sage, Vivian. I think that Vivian is about as good as the unit we'll be talking about after her in Remnant Violet, so you could think of both Vivian and Violet as the number three choice, in my opinion. Both of these characters are powerful DPS that under the right conditions feel like absolute powerhouses. Vivian is particularly hard to kill thanks to her skill 2 insight. This massively reduces the incoming damage that she takes as long as she has focus stacks. She starts with 3 thanks to the passive, and she gains 1 at the start of every turn, and also when she uses her skill 3. This character has an excellent mix of both single target and AoE DPS capabilities. She also has some minor supporting capabilities on the S3, Nature's Judgment. You get a critical hit damage buff for your team, as well as some minor healing. 
This character, in my opinion, is also one of the best characters to fight against characters like Spectre Tenebria and Apocalypse Ravi. So if you're struggling with both of those characters, then she is definitely a good pickup. She's also fairly good alongside of both of those characters, particularly Spectre, because the fact that they are both mages, you can stack book and get some pretty powerful combos. And again, if those characters are taken from you, then yeah, she's a pretty good counter to both of them. As far as use cases go, I think Vivian's pretty rock solid almost everywhere in Epic 7. I think she's definitely better in PvP than PvE, but you could definitely use her in things like Adventure if you're struggling. I've used her personally in Advent in the past. So yeah, again, you will get a lot of mileage, I feel like, out of this character, but rarely do I think she is the best tool for a given problem, and I think that's probably her biggest drawback. She's rock solid everywhere, but very rarely the best option anywhere that said again yeah it's not really much of a drawback right like just being slightly above average across the board doesn't really feel like a drawback her only i guess bad matchups when it comes to pvp are things like true damage attackers bomb based debuffers or solitary of the snow if you're not fighting those then the character just feels pretty good in almost every single scenario and unlike Judge Kisei from my previous videos, this is a girl with massive personality that you actually won't feel bad about picking up. So that kind of counts for a lot, right? Next up, let's talk about Remnant Violet, aka Rylet, or as people call him nowadays in the community, God. Rylet is an incredibly powerful single target DPS in this game. He has the ability to kill a lot of characters in this game in a single hit thanks to his S3 Massacre. It gives him not only an attack buff, but has impressive multipliers and ignores 50% of the target's defense. He's also incredibly flexible. You can play him as a fast assassin, or you can play him slow on a lifesteal set and grind out the game that way. The biggest drawback on this character is that he's made of paper with only 522 defense and 5,138 health. He's basically relying on his S2 passive concentration, which gives him an invasion buff, to actually survive. He needs to dodge things or he will die. And he has about a 50 to 70% evasion chance based on what artifacts you actually use on him. So that's going to be basically the biggest thing here is if he gets hit, he's pretty much useless. On top of that, there are characters that have bonus accuracy in the format that can kind of ignore his dodge mechanic. And there's also characters that can remove his dodge buff namely Conqueror Lilius. So you can't just pick him into every game because Conqueror Lilius is commonly played. He'll die instantly without proper setup. Still, if you do set him up properly and you're not super unlucky, the character should just clean house with ease. He just has crazy multipliers, huge amount of built-in damage. The character is also fairly good, by the way, in PvE content. I know I've personally used him for Automaton Tower, and I've also used him for things like Advent and Hall of Trials in the past. Again, really solid DPS for PvP. If you can set him up properly, he's going to do wonders for you. And if you think he looks cool and you are looking to pick up a strong DPS, then you could do far worse than Rylet. Time for the fifth spot, I have Commander Pavel. His defining feature is his S2 passive, Obstacle Elimination. After the second critical hit is landed on an opponent from someone on your team, he will activate Be Gone, which gives him an attack buff, and then launches a high-powered AoE attack, as well as gives him a massive combat readiness boost. At that point, it should be his turn, and he can swoop in for the kill with his S3, Die You Fly. Pavel is pretty straightforward. He's a carry for aggro and cleave-based strategies in PvP. If you can set him up properly, he should win the game for you outright. That said, skilled players are versed in how to deal with this character, so he's not as good in PvP as he was when he first came out. I think, personally, nowadays, Pavel's best use is for adventure. He is, in my opinion, the best adventure character in the entire game right now, allowing you to quickly clear through episode 3 and 4 stages with their higher health totals much, much faster. On top of that, he's the best farmer for unrecorded history in the game. That might not seem like a lot, but trust me, it is. Unrecorded history after its rework is the best source of gold income in Epic 7 right now. A well-built team around Pavel can farm you millions of gold in a very short span of time, which translates into potentially more gear rolled and more bookmarks to acquire from the secret shop, meaning more characters. Even if you are not keen on cleaving in PvP, it might be worth it to look into Pavel just for what he does for account progression.
Next up is Death Dealer Ray, who I have tied with Commander Pavel. This character's defining feature is the Pestilence buff that he gives his team on his S2 anatomical mutation. This makes it so that whenever any ally lands an attack on a target, it inflicts Venom to that target for two turns. Venom is basically poison, although it reduces the person's maximum health as well. This is really, really strong against a lot of slower bruiser-based teams. Basically anything that scales off of HP, Venom is basically tailor-made to actually deal with it. So characters like Apocalypse Ravi or like your Alencias, for example, any tanks as well, Venom really puts in a lot of work there. You can also pair Death Deal Array with a lot of AoE characters like Solitary of the Snow or Bellion to massively accelerate the rate at which Venom is applied to the enemy team. After that, you just use his skill 1 clinical trial to keep key targets slept until you can build up enough focus to use his skill 3, Cloud of Death. And just like the name implies, this thing is basically game over for your opponent. It does a massive amount of damage based on the amount of injury that the Venom stacks have inflicted over the course of the game and then sleeps the entire enemy team as well. And then on top of that, grants him an extra turn, which allows him to immediately go back into his S2 anatomical mutation, which means he's going to have another cloud of death very, very quickly. Ray is a character that is very hard to set up, but once you do, he kind of snowballs way out of control and just starts spamming sleeps everywhere, cloud of death everywhere. And it's really hard to argue with the results that he actually puts up. The only reason that Ray isn't higher on this list is because outside of World Arena, he's not really used anywhere else. And again, you can't just use him in every single game. But like I said, character's really, really strong when he's good. Lastly, we come to Astromancer Elena, who's not necessarily a bad character, but certainly the most niche one on this list. Her defining feature is her S2 passive, Disciple of the Stars, which grants her the Stars Blessing buff. That makes it so that she gets a small amount of attack and critical hit damage, and as long as she has the buff again, they cannot use any counter attacks. That tells you basically everything you need to know about the character. You pick her in scenarios in PvP where you do not want the enemy to use a counter attack. And that's pretty powerful, except for the fact that this is a ranger class character, and I think rangers in general need to be fairly insane for them to be pretty good in the current format. If you look at Elena's stats, she has 1,079 attack, which is pretty low for a damage dealer. 564 defense is also pretty low. 5,502 health, again, pretty low. So the character's squishy and doesn't exactly have the best damage stats. 115 speed is nice, but... It's not enough to save you from getting destroyed from powerful openers like Conqueror Lilius, who are pretty much going to be in almost every game the higher up in the ladder that you actually go. Having critical hit chance and damage innately is also nice, but the character, again, doesn't have the attack, and her multipliers are pretty average across the board. Basically, the only reason to play Astromancer Elena is, again, for the anti-counter niche that she has on this passive. And since, again, the stats are low... It's got to be in a team that can wrap the game up in a hurry, like Aggro or Cleave. This relegates her to basically World Arena or maybe Guild War. And if that strategy is your jam and those game modes are your jam, then take Elena. But I feel like for everyone else, I'd steer clear from her unless she's the only character on this list that you don't have. She, again, doesn't really do anything outside of World Arena or maybe Guild Wars. Not really usable in basically any form of PvE, at least as far as I'm aware. And that's pretty much going to be it for the Moonlight Blessing Fallen Land characters. On your screen now is a tier list with a visual representation about everything that we actually talked about. As you can see in the top tier, Meta Defining is Conqueror Lewis and Mediator Quark. Again, these are the characters, I think, that stand head and shoulders above over all other options. And if you're serious about PvP, I think that these should be the ones that you should pick up. After that, we have Vivian and Violet as strong choices that could be used in a variety of game modes. Strong but niche for Pavel and Ray, who are very good, but very, very specialized. And then Elena brings up the rear in Insanely Niche, where she's only really played in World Arena, maybe possibly Guild Wars. And even then, uh, there are other comparable options or options that might end up replacing her. Uh, she's pretty much, again, just for that anti-counter niche. I personally don't have her. But I very rarely see other content creators play her. She's maybe played like one in like 50 games that I see from somebody who's like a cleave specialist. So 
again, most niche character. But at the end of the day, it's still your decision. Choose the character that speaks to you, the one that you will have the most amount of fun with. Tune in later this week where we talk more about things like the artifact selector as well as the RGB five star selector that we're also getting this week for the fifth year anniversary of Epic 7. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye now.